Hello, dear friends. Today, we will take a look at the diary of a German soldier. It is the diary that was found with a killed German soldier in January 1942. It has been translated and printed in 10 copies later for analysis and further study. As it is not literary edited, it is presented here in its original form, which makes it very difficult material to digest. It describes the advance of the German army during the beginning of the war. The kilometers overcame by him will shock the unprepared to the horrors of war reader. Remember to rate this video and also leave your opinion in the comments. Well, we begin. June 22, 1941 In the morning, the war against Russia began. We first moved through the woods five kilometers in length. After that, we got two bunkers, at which only a few Russians remained. There was heavy fighting in the afternoon, three Russian dugouts being fiercely battled, one killed and six wounded. We had marched 34 kilometers during the night. We had slept about four hours. June 23rd. We left at 8 a.m. and were on our way for the whole day, and we had advanced on 40 kilometers. In the evening, at 10 o'clock, we were at our destination. June 24th. 7 a.m., waking up, cleaning weapons. At 10 o'clock, we march. The Russians, with the support of tanks, hit us after 10 kilometers of march. Our tanks and anti-tank guns were impossibly numerous. Advance to the front line. We entrench ourselves. Two hours later, our advance continues. We reach the city. There is nothing left of it. The advancement for the day was 30 kilometers. We reached our destination at 12 o'clock at night, had a three-hour sleep. June 25th. Four o'clock, we get up and cross the Davina River. There are lots of halts while we advance. The artillery is shooting hard. Advance on 10 kilometers. After lunch, we have a rest to clean the weapon. Our wagon train had approached. June 26th. At 5 o'clock, we raise and search through the forest. At 12 o'clock, we seek cover from the Russian bombers. At 3 p.m., we keep advancing, making lots of halts. At 1 a.m., we reached our destination, about 30 kilometers distance covered. June 27th. 8 a.m., rising, day of rest. We get our stuff in order, inspect our wagons, work all day long. June 28th. At 7 o'clock rise, 80-kilometer march in full gear. We arrived on June 29th at 8 a.m. Everybody was totally exhausted. We stayed asleep until 1 o'clock. In the afternoon, we had feet inspection. June 30th. Five o'clock wake up. We loaded on trucks, covered 100 kilometers. We arrived at two o'clock in the afternoon. We rest for this day. July 1st. The day of rest. Cleaning of guns and inspection. July 2nd. At 6 a.m., we got up. It was raining heavily. At eight o'clock, we started our march. We covered 45 kilometers. The rain poured the whole day. We arrived at 11 p.m., and we slept in the house. July 3rd. At 6 a.m., we started moving. We covered 45 kilometers. It was the hottest weather. We passed Jacobstad. The big bridge was destroyed. We settled our tents 22 kilometers behind Jacobstad. July 4th. Day of rest. Getting all our stuff in order. Inspecting our weapons. At 2 p.m., we loaded into the railway wagons and covered 50 kilometers. The next 8 kilometers on foot. The bridge, which carries the railway line, is blown up. July 5th. Our wagon train arrived. July 6th. Sunday. Day of rest. Cleaning guns. We are quartered in a big school. July 7th. 35 kilometers march. July 8th. We were woken up at 11 o'clock in the evening. We made a 50-kilometer march. After dinner, we slept for two hours. We loaded on the trucks at 11 o'clock in the evening. We go across the island. This city was almost wiped out from the face of the earth. July 9th. By 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we reached our destination, and we covered 150 kilometers on trucks. We unloaded three kilometers away from our enemies, cleaned our weapons quickly. 3 o'clock in the morning, we attacked the closest village. A heavy battle. We took two villages by seven o'clock. One killed, four wounded. We sleep in the trenches tonight. 
July 10th. At 2 o'clock, we got up. We advanced, then the battle was on. We took a railway station. Smoke ammunition was used here. The Russians retreated, leaving us trophies, motorcycles, vehicles, trucks, and guns. We were deadly exhausted. Three hours sleeping in a ravine. Now we have a lot of sugar and butter. The second battle in the afternoon, at 3 o'clock. There was only the 5th Company involved, both with artillery and anti-tank guns. We covered 8 kilometers. First of all, we burnt the whole village to the ground. We ford the river, up to the waste in water. We shot out a lot of ammunition. The Russians moved to our side. Their spirit is overwhelmed. At 9 o'clock in the morning, we returned back to the railway station. In the night, there was an enemy air raid. July 11th. This day we have a rest. We put all our stuff in order. We captured a hundred Russians that day. July 12th. Before lunch, we have a rest. Then we start the march at 5 o'clock. We have covered 20 kilometers. There was a very bad road there. A small village became our dislocation. July 13th. We prepare the wagons for the march. Isolated and defeated remnants of the Russians kept constantly roaming around us. We had six killed and twelve wounded before July 11th. July 14th. Day of the rest. July 15th. Day of the rest. We were about to be loaded into trucks, but the vehicles never arrived. July 16th. We rest until lunch. After lunch at 8 p.m., we leave by truck and go out on the highway. July 17th. We reached our destination at 11 a.m. and covered 150 kilometers. For three kilometers we ran, getting into the forest. There is an intense battle two kilometers ahead. We are in the reserve position for this time. July 18th. We slept in anti-tank ditches for the night. We stand in the field guard each day. July 19th. At 5 o'clock in the morning, we got the alert. Everything was in readiness. Before lunch, we were still in the forest. After lunch, we put outposts at the edge of the forest because the Russian tanks were coming. July 20th. We got up at 5 o'clock, instantly pull forward, and return about 5 kilometers back. Then, we take cover in the bush. At 1 p.m., we moved by trucks 30 kilometers in the opposite direction, unloaded and entrenched in a field. July 21st. 1 a.m., rise. At 3 a.m., our artillery gunfire begins. There was a heavy fighting all day. Many losses on both sides. We had 6 killed and 15 wounded. We entrenched ourselves again in the evening. July 22nd. Day of the rest. Cleaning weapons near the field wagons. The Russians began a new artillery fire. A direct shot at the wagon. In the afternoon, the advance again. We are ordered to take the closest village. The combat readiness at the edge of the forest. The Russians made a huge attack with anti-tank guns and all heavy weapons artillery. We remained here that night, the same night the Russians retreated. July 23rd. At 6 a.m., we advance further. The enemy left the village. They built the most powerful fortifications here. We immediately put up a field guard in the village. After lunch, we moved seven kilometers in the opposite direction. Then we loaded into trucks and returned to our battalion which was located in the same place. During that night, we slept in tents. July 24th. At 8 a.m., we got up. We rested, took a bath, had laundry. All it was till the dinner. After dinner at 2 o'clock, we moved forward 10 kilometers. As soon as we arrived, we entrenched ourselves facing the strongest artillery fire. It was a direct hit, so we had three men killed. July 25th. At 4 a.m., we move out. Advanced 12 kilometers, 5th Company in reserve. After lunch, we moved to the guard. One killed. We took the village by attack in the evening. At 9 p.m., the Russians attacked us, with the support of tanks. The mess was terrible. The tanks are destroyed. July 26th. At 1 a.m., we are back in the combat guard. At 1 p.m., we have our lunch brought to us. July 27th. We are in a field guard one kilometer away from the Russians. After lunch, the Russians retreat again along with their tanks. By evening, we blew up one more church. July 28th. We stood in the field guard. At 8 p.m., we went on a reconnaissance run and came across the enemy. 
July 29th. Field guards, and again we went on reconnaissance from the 5th Company. The old village was taken by the enemy again. Two of us were captured. At 8 o'clock in the evening, we moved to the next village. There is enemy there, however, and we are entrenched before the village. July 30th. At 4 a.m., we attack with the support of six tanks. The enemy retreats. We captured 45 Russians. We remained in the same place until lunchtime. Once again, under the fire of Russian artillery, we entrenched. I participate in the reconnaissance in the next village. There are isolated units of the enemy. At 4 a.m., two battalions go ahead. Somebody stepped on a mine, one man dead. We got letters in the evening. July 31st. We rest before lunch and leave at 2 o'clock, covering 10 kilometers, moving along the narrow roads through the bush. At evening, we settled our tents. August 1st. We got up at 8 a.m. to get our stuff in order. After lunch at 4 p.m., we start our march. The 7th Company was 7 kilometers away from us. The enemy was also there. There is a massive barrage of artillery fire. August 2nd. We are in the field guard, not allowed even to make a move in the trenches, as the Russians immediately open artillery fire. The kitchen turned back, never making it to us because of the strongest artillery fire. August 3rd. In the morning, the Russians attack us, with the support of tanks, but the attack is beaten back. We got one man wounded. August 4th. At 12 a.m., the Russians start shooting at our positions again, with all types of weapons. At 2 a.m., they pull back. At 4 a.m., our two squads go on reconnaissance. The Russians make a strong chase after us, surround us, and shoot at us with machine gun fire. We have one wounded. We are under artillery fire again in the afternoon. August 5th. At 12 o'clock at night, the Russians advance again, only to be repulsed. We are again under heavy artillery fire, causing four dead and two wounded. At 9 p.m., our position was taken by the police division. We moved back 10 kilometers to the rear. We were in the field guard until August 9th. August 10th. This was the day the general assault on the Luga was to take place. We were supposed to march 15 kilometers to the river. At 3 a.m., we got up, march beginning at 5 a.m. The second battalion in reserve. We marched 8 kilometers and entrenched in the forest. One man dead. At 10 p.m., we headed back. At 1 a.m., we reached our destination covering about 10 kilometers. August 11th. At 7 a.m., we got up. We started our march, covered 10 kilometers. We entrenched in the forest. In the open field, we were attacked by a storm of artillery fire. It rained heavily. Artillery fire was fierce. It shattered the dugout with a direct hit. The whole area in front of the dugout is mined. Our battalion is advancing further. In the nearest ravine, we lay down and were bombarded by our own artillery fire. We had to take big losses, as well as the losses of the companies nearby. Our company lost three men. August 13th. At 12 o'clock at night, the Russians, with the support of tanks, advance again. The infantry goes and fires armor-piercing incendiary bullets while covered by the tanks. The fire is heavy. Six tanks are destroyed. We have one man killed. At noon, we advance. Our guns open a hurricane fire. Looks like a crazy dance of fire. We move forward. Many killed Russians lying in the woods, in dugouts. Many captured Russian soldiers. August 14th. We attack the next village. Our aircrafts throw down bombs. Our artillery makes preparation for the fire. The enemy pulls back. We take the next village, and the 6th Company that had the heaviest fight of the evening stays in the guard. We return to our company. August 15th. Day of the rest. At noon, we are on a reconnaissance run. We got fired upon. We are one kilometer away from the Russians, and we open a mad fire. In the evening, the Russians advance in the area of two companies. They are allowed to approach at a distance of 50 meters. Then, they were fired upon. The victory. Numerous Russian soldiers were captured at the same time. August 16th. We build the trenches. There is a forest 100 meters ahead of us. We build true dugouts. August 17th. We improve the dugout construction and equipment. August 18th and 19th. We are in defense. Every day we go on reconnaissance. In the next village, located two kilometers away from us, there are Russians. They also build dugouts and bunkers. In defense we will be until August 24th. 
Frequently, we go on reconnaissance to the Russian positions. They tried to attack us several times, but we had always beat back their attacks. August 24th. The Advance. At 10 a.m., our artillery makes artillery preparation, but the Russians already left the village that night. We go across the river on an old bridge, which is mined. One man was killed. We march another 15 kilometers to our goal. It is not reached, because the Russians set up barricades everywhere. We spend the night in the forest. The weather is horrible, and it rains badly. August 25th. At 4 a.m., we keep moving. We approach the bridge. It was blown up. The infantrymen ford the river. The vehicles and the wagons stay in the village. Our second platoon goes on a reconnaissance run into the village and sees the enemy outside the village. Some of the civilians want to escape, but they remain when they realize that we are not causing them any harm. One hour later, they blow up the bridge. We move to another village, to the railway station, with two factories there. In the evening, we trap chickens, cooking them with potatoes. We have to do this in the absence of a field kitchen. August 26th. Day of the rest. We put out a guard post. About 400 meters away from us, on the other shore of the river, Luga, there are Russian positions with dugouts just at the edge of the forest. The Russians advance toward another regiment's position, but their attack is beaten back. August 27th. We advance across the river. At 6 a.m., food and hot meals were brought to us. At 9 a.m., our artillery opens a staggering fire. First of all, the 6th and 7th companies were transferred to the other bank on rafts. Their losses during the crossing were awful, as the whole river is in the zone of Russian fire. Our boat capsized as we tried to ferry the anti-tank and infantry guns to the other shore. Up to our necks in water, we struggled to get to the shore, our heavy machine gun covering our crossing. The first fighters managed to get across safely. We shoot from the very spot where we cross. The machine gun is suddenly suppressed by our own artillery. We were shot again by the artillery at our own position, and some of us were wounded. Then I rush out and run back up to my knees in water. This is when a shrapnel hits me in the lower part of my leg. My comrades bandaged my leg. The bandage was already done more thoroughly. Many wounded people were already here. It took us four hours to wait for the doctor, and he did not show up until afterwards, and we were finally taken to the rear. The fire of the Russians eased a bit. We arrived at the assembly point, and within an hour, the ambulance vehicles arrived, and we started heading for the main dressing station. They bandaged us again there, and we stayed here until the next morning. Later, we were quickly transported by ambulance vehicles to the railway station, and from there, to Poskov for one day. After that, we spent two days in Riga, where they will feed us well. September 2nd, 1941. Our train to Germany leaves. We go through Königsberg and Berlin. We spend one night in Magdeburg. Other morning, I was sent to a reserve hospital. I was in the hospital for five weeks. Then I was given three weeks leave to make a complete recovery and another five weeks in the reserve battalion of the 2nd Company. December 8, 1941. I am on my way back to my old division, heading in the direction of Petersburg by the route. Berlin, East Prussia, Königsberg, Riga, Skov, St. Petersburg. At 7 a.m., I left to join my old division. December 20th. I arrived at the station. We got unloaded from the wagon and marched 20 kilometers. We slept in a military hospital inside a big building. December 21st. We passed Krasnog Verdesk, making the distance of 25 kilometers. The division headquarters and the logistics were located in the houses. Our division was directed toward Schlüsselburg on Ladoga Lake. December 22nd and 23rd. In both days, we put in order all our stuff and weapons. December 24th, 1941. Preparing for Christmas. We celebrated Christmas Eve with artillery staff. December 25th. I am relocated to another department. December 26th. Christmas rejoices. We got presents. A bottle of wine, a small bar of chocolate, cakes, three quarts of vodka. However, we had to pay for all this by ourselves. December 27th. Until lunch, there was tactical training. The rank of non-commissioned officer was given to me. December 28th. Receipt of salary. December 29th and 30th. A lot of different rumors are flying around, with some saying that our division will be replaced by another unit. 
others saying that the division will be set aside to build winter quarters, and still others saying we will be pulled to the rear. On January 1st, we will march with full gear to cover 120 kilometers, about 25 kilometers every day. However, nothing is certain yet. January 1st, 1942. We packed all our stuff. We were all right. January 2nd. At 8 a.m., we start. Arrived at 12 o'clock. We covered 15 kilometers. The weather was very cold. Two people frostbitten their hands. January 3rd. 25 kilometers covered. January 4th. 20 kilometers covered. January 5th. Day of the rest. Awful accommodations. There are women sleeping everywhere. January 6th. The march of 15 kilometers. We arrived at Tozno. We were placed in a good apartment. January 7th. 22 kilometers covered. This is where our division was located. January 8th. Marching to our regiment. We marched about 20 kilometers, and then we slept. At 9 p.m., the company was there. The company had a special building, taking the whole company to sleep in one house. There were 40 men in the company. January 9th. At 8 a.m., get up. We clean our weapons, put stuff in order. At 11 a.m., the battalion commander visited us, and we were all immediately lined up. Then we got the food supplies. At 2 p.m., we moved, marched through the forest. At 5 p.m., we arrived. We were in small dugouts, which were very hard to move. That is where we had to replace the other unit. January 10th. During the whole night and all day gunfire, the Russians made the same. Now and then, several shots from time to time. We have to get to another rotation and guard post every five hours again. Our posts and listening posts are 100 meters in the forest before us. January 11th. The same scene. Thousand shots were fired today. January 12th. The same scene. January 13th. The Russian artillery and mortars fire at our positions. And it seems that preparations for an attack are underway, but this does not happen. January 14th. The same scene. By morning, a strong recon unit in camouflage cloaks gets close to us. One of them was already 10 meters away from our dugout, but we shot him with a machine gun and attacked him with hand grenades. Altogether, we shot six Russians. It gets a little calmer after lunch. January 15th. The Russians again crawl up to our positions, only to be detected quickly. We got two men shot. January 16th. By morning, the Russians attack again, this time without the camouflage cloaks. The Russians manage to get close to the edge of the forest. The Russians fire at our machine gun positions, and one machine gun position is destroyed. They retreat. Later that evening, I am assigned to the first squad, as first number. January 17th. At 2 a.m., the Russians attack again. There is one of them firing at our bunker from a five-meter distance. He gets scared off, though, and moves away. The Russians shoot from the forest from 50 meters away. We shoot the flares. The ammunition runs out. The machine gun fails, but finally the Russians are caught in a heavy fire, and at 5 a.m. they pull back. January 18th. The whole night the Russians break through to our positions, only to be pushed back by our machine gun fire the entire time. In the morning, at 8 a.m., they still break through. So we had to leave our machine gun position and our bunker also. The Russians throw hand grenades and smoke puff charges at our positions, and yet they do not venture across the railroad embankment. Until the middle of the day, the Russians are near the railroad station. Afterwards, they slowly pull back. All the same, the Russian soldiers roam and crawl around continually. January 19th. It is rather quiet. At night, there is a big mess in the forest. January 20th. Tonight was pretty calm indeed. The Russians attack again in the morning dropping back again with our machine gun fire. January 21st. On this night, at 2 a.m., the Russians continue to break through to our positions again. They crawled up to 20 meters, and before they had a chance to do anything, they were pushed back. They retreat. All day and all night, the Russians work in the forest 300 meters away from us. They cut and chop wood. They even ride horses and wagons. It was peaceful in the daytime. January 22nd. Our machine gun was not fired all evening. At 11 p.m., the Russians broke through and lay down taking cover in our trenches. 
at a distance of 20 meters from our position. We had been firing three machine guns for two hours at the Russians, who had broken through. The bullets were whistling by our ears. We stood all night at our post. In the daytime, it was relatively peaceful. At 6 p.m., we left. At 7 p.m., we were in the regiment. Everybody was in the dugouts. January 23rd. It was a day of rest. In the evening, it all started again. We were running for two hours. After 15 minutes, we were resting. Then, 5th Company approached. The 8th Company marches back, getting some sleep, taking a nap in the house. It was terribly cold. At 11 p.m., we rushed out of the house. We were kicked out by the cold. Here, we spend the day and overnight. January 24th. We get some rest. That day, we stay here for the night. The diary breaks with this one. Very disappointing that there are no details of this final fight. Here's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please support it with a like and the channel with a subscription. Goodbye to you all and see you soon.